So in the last video, I promised you today we would be talking about how the morals of this are going to all work, because there are some very clear problems with what we've talked about so far, and they're put very well by a comment on the interesting Nerd Club video, The Drowning Theory, which was basically based on my thoughts on what happened to all of these babies being sacrificed to the children of the forest. And someone in the comments pointed out, I really, really like this theory, but I have to get a little meta to say why I don't quite buy it as Michael talks about stuff suggested. I honestly can't see George R. R. Martin as a person ever writing out a situation where, huh, maybe if the powerful lords had been allowed to keep uh, first knighting their subjects, everything would have worked out better. Like, the guy goes very, very dark places a lot, but it's never ever portrayed as anything but the horror that it is. Having such an evil be in any way the good option just doesn't sit right. And yes, I know humanity being stuck in a horrific pact isn't a good thing or portrayed as such, but I'm sure you see where I'm coming from, and that is put exactly correctly. That is something that I got hung up on as to how this is all going to play out going forward into the story for quite a long time when I realized, hey, it seems like the entire old ways is a giant blood sacrifice system. That's pretty messed up and evil. How the heck is that going to work out? So here's how I think it goes. Westeros under the Pact and under the Old Ways is essentially a magically entrenched conservative society where the same feudal lords rule for 10,000 years in the same castles and all of the subjects are subjugated by the same people for generation after generation. Nothing really completely changes because it can't change because if it did change, there'd be a huge backlash. All these bad ice demons would come back, so you just can't change the system. Big backlash. You don't want to deal with that, right? That, that sounds tough. That sounds bad. Sounds scary. There is a literally magical fear of change entrenched deeply in every cultural tradition of the North and the Old Ways. It is all ice conservative ice. It is designed that way. Ice and fire is conservative and progressive. You have ice where it is a literally magically entrenched society that cannot change because if anything changes about all of these horrible customs and cultures, the fear of the others becomes real. There is a fear of changing this system. And that is woven through everything so that 10,000 years later, even though they may have forgotten why or they don't really believe in it, they still follow all of the traditions. It's in some way George R. R. Martin giving us like an explanation for the fact that he's going to kind of extremes, right? With like ice and fire, you have this conservative extreme, you have this progressive extreme, but they're both magically backed, right? So like it's a little ridiculous to have a single feudal ruling family rule from the same castle with the same customs for 10,000 years. But if you give it a good magical explanation, like this incredibly entrenched fear of social change that the North has, thanks to the others and the old ways and their customs, that makes it make a lot more sense and you can kind of start to suspend your disbelief. In the same way, it's a little ridiculous on the fiery progressive side to have a 13-year-old girl overthrowing slave empires and establishing her own rule, but if you give her three nuclear warheads who think that she's their mom, suddenly you can suspend your disbelief a little bit, and then you've got Queen Danny ruling from Dragon Bay. So that is where the North is starting from with the Others, right? And if you look at the Others through that perspective, all of this kind of starts to make sense. And especially if the Wall is, as I have speculated in this series, a giant line of weirwoods with others potentially strapped to them or being tortured in some way to power the wall, that makes sense as to why the others are coming back. And in fact, it would be a very good progressive message if the others actually don't want to destroy humanity. They want to go back into the weirwood the way they were naturally. And that this system that relies on blood sacrifice and the same feudal family ruling for 10,000 years was actually not good and a corruption of the true nature of humanity and reality. And then when it ends, the fear of it ending is actually not what all of the people thought it would be this entire time. The entire time, this giant fear of what would happen if we change the way we do things turns out that, oh, the ice demons just 
want you to stop destroying their trees so that they can go back into the trees as they were naturally, that that would kind of make a lot of sense, right? If it's something like that, right? If it's something where the others would not want to destroy humanity if humanity themselves bring down the wall, as I think we've talked about and speculated strongly could be the case, right? There could be very good reasons the others want the wall down, and that could be the source of their dispute with humanity. Well, then all of a sudden, this giant fear of like, oh, if we brought down the wall, the ice demons would wash over us and destroy everything. And then that's just not the case at all. That kind of makes sense. And in fact, if the wall is the whole problem in the first place, that is a very progressive message, isn't it? Like, it, it, it all starts to make sense once you understand potentially what the wall is, potentially what the others might want, and how all of this could be the all pointing to essentially the fact that the old ways are bad. They've always been bad. And it makes sense for a progressive to write a story where the character grows up to learn that the old ways he was raised with, the incredibly conservative culture he was raised with, is bad and his religion is a little messed up and maybe he should stop following it in the way that it's been taught to him at the very least right that seems a lot more like a story that george R. R. martin would go for so no the answer is not going to be oh actually we should go back to the first night we should go back to tossing more babies down wells or leaving them out in the snow it's going to be hey that whole system was messed up the whole time and actually what blood raven and bran have been trying to do, or what Bloodraven has been trying to do and will pass on to Bran to finish the job of, is ending the old ways. Which, let me remind you, Bloodraven is called the last Greenseer. Now that could just be because he's the last one currently alive, but if you called someone the last Pope, you know, the Catholic Church would probably be assumed to not look the same after they are gone. If Bloodraven is, in the last Pope sense, the last Green Seer, and Bran is the start of something new after he does what he needs to do by the end of the story, that would make a heck of a lot of sense, right? That would make a good reason that the story is happening now, if that makes sense, right? You've got these 10,000 years of this magical tradition going on, this magical pact being followed, obviously it has to end. Obviously we're not going back to the old ways. We're learning that the old ways were messed up and how exactly they need to be ended. And this is all part of that. So yes, the thing that keeps the others away was blood sacrifice. And if we had continued the blood sacrifice of the old ways, the others maybe wouldn't be coming back. But that wouldn't be good, right? What does Blood Raven do? He's always for the greater good. He's doing the hard thing for the greater good. He's doing the same thing now. Ending the old ways and bringing on the threat of the others at a time when humanity has the right people in the right place to deal with it is the best way to handle this scenario. So... What are the right people and what are the right places for them? Well, we've already talked about that a bit. John has learned about the wildlings being beyond the wall and really just having their own motivations and trying to do what's best for their people, and he lets them through the wall. Maybe he has to let the others into the trees within the wall. Bran has gone far north, and he is seeing these old ways, and he is seeing the problems, potentially... He's going to realize, oh no, I just ate my best friend Jojen. And he's going to be like, ah, oh, this is really messed up. And Blood Raven's going to be like, yeah. See, like, to take on this power and to maintain this power, all of this messed up stuff needs to continue to happen. So, like, now that you've seen the consequences of all this messed up stuff, which Bran will probably see over the course of the Winds of Winter, you'll realize, as Blood Raven has, that, oh man, this needs to end. And that's probably going to be Bran's message that he has to come to grips with. The societal power that he has been given is from a bad system. Because Bran is magically and politically made powerful by the system, right? He is a gifted old ways magic user, and he is a Stark in Winterfell. 
who could return and take land and command armies if he were to announce his presence. So he has all of the power possibly that could be given to someone by the old system, and it will be a very powerful progressive message for George R. R. Martin to have him be the one who decides, yeah, this is messed up, we're going to change all of this. And we're going to see how he does that throughout the books. At least that's my prediction. So if you want me to make a guess at how Bran solves the problem of the others, I believe, based on some very good clues put together by the fan community over the years, which I have been exposed to, and then eventually been able to piece together once I realized what I realized about the wall, I believe that what's going to happen is the others want humanity to bring down the wall to allow them back into the trees, in the same way the wildlings just wanted them to open the wall so that they could go hide behind it. The others just want them to bring down the wall so that they can restore their natural state, which was being spirits within the trees rather than being the shadow that emerged from the wood, right? George announced them in the story by saying a shadow emerged from the dark of the wood. In the show, we see a other be created when someone is strapped to a weirwood. If the other spirits are pulled from the wood into a physical form, it makes complete sense that they would want to go back into the wood. So maybe, if there is others strapped to the weirwoods within the wall, they want them freed, that makes sense, and then they all want to be able to go back into the weirwoods, perhaps at the giant one at the night fort, wherever you gotta have it happen, that seems like there, maybe Winterfell, in the godswood at Winterfell somehow, it could also make sense, but in any case, the other spirits need to go back into the weirwoods. So what's Bran's role in that? As I said, Bloodraven has all of the people in the right places at the right time for this to happen. So what is Bran's role? Well, he is the first person, potentially, in a long time, telepathically powerful enough to take on the spirit that has been occupying the other's place within the Weirwood. The Green Seer spirit. The human Green Seer collective consciousness that was created when the children kicked out the others from the Weirwood, locked them in the North, and gave the powers to mankind when they signed the pact so that mankind would have the numbers to give them the green seers that they wanted. It was all to get them more power, so they betrayed the other spirits. They didn't let them back into the weirwoods. They kicked them out in favor of making a pact with humanity, who they had originally created the others to destroy. In a way, you could say the children of the forest betrayed the others. They double-crossed them. They removed them from the weirwoods as an effort to fight against mankind, and then while they were removed, they turned around and signed a pact with mankind, giving them powers of the weirwood magic and building a giant ice wall. So again, whether there's others physically strapped inside the wall, or whether there's just weirwoods in there, I don't care which you believe, in any case the others have very good reason to be very angry at the wall's existence, and they want it down so that they can go back into those weirwoods. I think that is everything that makes the most sense, that I have seen in the fandom all pieced together in a way that makes the most sense. So Bran, in the show, when he becomes this robot-like figure and says he's not Bran Stark anymore, that's because that's when he has removed the human green seer consciousness from the Weirwood into him, right? He got, didn't he get like a big vision where he just saw a bunch of random shenanigans? That was the download. He downloaded everything, and then it was out of the Weirwoods, and within him. The show didn't go into it. The show did not explain any of the magic, but if you assume they were just following a bunch of steps that George had laid out without explaining them clearly, that tracks with what we saw in the television show. Bran taking the human green seer consciousness out of the Weirwood so that when the wall falls, the others can go back in, and that's why, like, they needed to come up with some other mechanism to defeat the Night King, perhaps, because they didn't want to go into detail explaining, like, yeah, 10,000 years ago, this pact was signed. Now, ever since then, they've been throwing babies down wells and leaving them out for these forest elves who have been feeding them to the tree roots. But then, if the tree roots don't get enough blood, then they didn't want to do all of that for the show. And honestly, 
screw them. That would be so freaking cool if we had had like six more seasons and gone all in on that. That would have been amazing. And when the wall fell by all the trees shaking themselves apart, it would have been freaking gold. All right. If George nails this storyline in in these books, it's going to be freaking gold. But I think this is the direction he's going based on the clues he's given us, based on what we saw on the television show. That's kind of what I'm trying to do, right? Like I'm trying to piece together like what little bits of the TV show make sense, as we are all trying to do since we saw the end of Game of Thrones. But I think this all lines up pretty well. Taking the spirits out of the wood so that the other spirits can go back in is Bran's role as a powerful telepathic figure. And then as king, he probably has to rule over humanity and try like pass on the correct knowledge all of that makes good sense but i put out a video earlier on my channel many of you may have found my channel because of it called the revenge of the children of the forest where i couldn't get over the fact that the old ways seem pretty evil and bran becoming king seems like a bad thing i think this is a much better explanation for the role of king bran in the story because it's much less dark if Bran is ending the old ways, perhaps at great personal cost to himself, right? Like he's having to essentially give up his humanity for the sake of the realm. That's like the message of a good king, right? You have to give yourself up for the sake of humanity and for the realm and for the future of all of mankind. If you want to be the king, that's what you have to do. If that's what Bran has to do, right? He has to push society forward, face the fears of the long night, the things he heard ghost stories about growing up, and improve and progress his incredibly conservative society, showing them that they don't have to be afraid. And at great personal cost to himself, he does this, becomes the king, gives up his humanity for the good of the rest of humanity, and passes on all of the knowledge he can. That's a pretty good king. Like, that's a pretty good moral message for George to give people with the story of King Bran. So, what do you think? Do you have anything to add, any different suggestions, because I'm pretty far into the speculation at this point in the video, but next time I've got something more concrete, a little bit we're going to talk about the Horn of Joraman and how it brings down the wall, so make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you all for that very soon.